Now, I like to stay up to date on the latest smartphones. Sometimes they do get by me and I have to kind of spend some time a little bit later on them instead. And such is the case with the excellent OnePlus 12. I took it to Italy on a vacation of a lifetime and I didn't regret it one bit. I took a chance actually right before we left. I decided on a whim I was gonna move my SIM from my Pixel 8 Pro onto the OnePlus 12. And really the chance that I'm making at that point, you know, I'm going to this amazing country with all of these photo opportunities, going with my family. I want those camera opportunities to be just right. Would I be happy with the camera on this as my daily driver in Italy versus what I know with the Pixel 8 Pro? And I'm very happy to say that I was super pleased by the performance and the job that it did. I did also bring the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, another phone that I'm reviewing. That experience is going to be shared in a separate video. But let's start with the design of the OnePlus 12. Now, OnePlus really stayed close to its design of the OnePlus 11. 11 is on the right. The 12 is on the left. And I'll talk about what you see right there here in a second. But you can see it's very, very similar. Obviously, the circular bump on the 11 is just maybe a little bit smaller. And there's other design touches here that are definitely different. But for the most part, the look and feel is very similar. That large round camera bump is a strong character of the look of this device, though you can see, like I pointed out, <laughs> it makes it a little bit of a target if you happen to drop it. I do love the texture on the back. It gives a nice differentiation between the shiny qualities that you see up here on the camera bump and then that matte finish. Uh, it doesn't necessarily make it less slippery. So keep that in mind as evidenced once again by the fact that I have that little broken piece of the camera bump. The curvy quality, I would say, is a bit of a challenge. I used this phone a lot on the trip as a camera. Holding the camera with the curves on the phone can be a little bit of a challenge. The, the curvy quality makes it you know, kind of slippery, a little bit less easy to hold on to uh, when you're in camera mode. But I got used to it mostly over time. And then not to mention the actual display has a curvy quality too. That poses another problem, which I'm going to talk to uh, here in a moment. Haptics are excellent, man. I love the feel of the haptics and I'm a real sucker for nice, solid, like snappy haptics. When you feel them, you know, I hate the cheap kind of empty, hollow feeling haptics. And here you get a nice tight haptic kick. Overall, it's a very beautiful phone. Now, uh, we were all over the map on our trip. And like I said, this phone is pretty slippery for the most part, without a case especially. Um, I am very proud that throughout the course of the entire three weeks we were gone, three weeks actually doesn't sound that impressive, but for the entire trip where we were going all over the place, all sorts of dangerous uh, territory for a phone to fall and, and break, I never once dropped it. But literally last night at a concert, it slipped off my lap it fell on the concrete, and that's why I have this cracked camera bump right here. You know, it got a little scuffing right up there. The concrete that it fell on was really uh, rocky concrete. It wasn't smoothed out. So when it landed, it was almost certain to land on a rock, and, you know, the outer edge of the camera bump wasn't going to protect it from that. So I understand why it happened. It's a bummer that it did. And honestly, when I saw how it landed, I'm pretty impressed that more of this backing didn't, you know, end up getting a big crack through it. It was just isolated to the camera bump right up there. So I suppose that's a win. As for the display. Okay. So this is a 6.8 inch QHD plus AMOLED display, 120 Hertz uh, refresh on this as well. Solid outdoor brightness when you're outdoors. I feel like it gives me very ample brightness, 4,500 nits actually, depending on what is showing on the screen at any time. You can't control that specifically. It just really depends on what is showing. It's also protected by Gorilla Glass Victus 2. So perhaps that saved it last night. But those curvy sides, man, when I'm holding the device with one hand like I'm doing right now and then tapping with another, sometimes it would work great. Other times, like I couldn't 
quite interact with it the way that I needed to. The only way to do that was for me to really move my fingertips to the outside edges so that I wasn't wrapping around in any way, shape or form. And this is just kind of a consistent issue when you're talking about curved displays. There was a time where they were totally in vogue and now we're going in the opposite direction. This is part of the reason why I don't like them anymore. Now as for performance, I mean, you're going to get the best of the best out of this right now. It's got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 which you know we know by now it's a super tight processor as expected. This device has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, this particular configuration does anyways. Multitasking, taking lots of pictures, demanding apps, games, it was all flawless as I expected it to be. Also battery life was incredible. And this thing has a ton of battery capacity in it, 5,400 milliamp hours to be exact. You can get up to 100 watts of wired charging, so super fast. Also 50 watts of wireless charging on this device. No surprise, this phone performs with the best of them. So you're gonna love the performance on the OnePlus 12. All right, we gotta talk about the camera because you know, going to Italy, yes, this was my phone. You know, I had my SIM loaded into it. This was, by all accounts, my phone for the entire trip. But really what I used it mostly for was the camera. And for the first half of the trip, I was running the camera in mostly full auto mode. I wanted to see how it does right out of the box, the way most people are going to use it. It has the 50 megapixel with an f 1.6 aperture on the back here, which did so well. I, man, I, I put this camera through its paces. A lot of really challenging shots, uh, a lot of low light shots. I'm also a fan of optical telephoto lenses. And this has a 3X telephoto that was bang on when I really needed it. Now, about halfway through the trip, I switched on HEIC mode and I just went into settings. If you go in here, you find this 10 bit color mode, switch that on. It gives you a little bit of warning to tell you, you know, it's not as compatible uh, with all apps, but it happens to be fully compatible with everything on the OnePlus 12 and definitely with Google Photos, everything uploaded that I took in 10 bit mode worked in Google Photos, which is kind of the app that I use to manage all of my photos. So that was nice. It's 10 bit color mode. And essentially what that means is you're increasing the depth of tone by an order of magnitude. So if you're taking a picture of a sunset, you're going to get a more even kind of spectrum of color in that sunset. And 10 bit color mode didn't slow down the camera performance. I was just taking pictures like normal. Once I turned it on, I kind of forgot that I had it on, even though it gives you the little bit of the call out. Uh, once you do, if I've got it running, and then I go into my photo mode. It says right up at the top there, 10 bit color. I didn't have any compatibility issues with it. I was really happy with the output. It works by the way, in all modes, except portrait mode. And in all, I was very pleased with the camera output on this phone for the entire trip. And that's saying something when you're going to a place like Italy, you want it to perform well. And it definitely did. All right, software wise, Oxygen OS and Color OS, they actually merged a while back. Well, actually it's really now just Color OS with the Oxygen OS name. So I guess it's kind of a merger, maybe by name only. Here though, it's Oxygen OS 14.0. It's based on Android 14. OnePlus has over the years kind of refined its UI and its approach on customization and kind of the detail, the uh, the look and feel of things. While I had this device in my possession, I actually did receive a big update that reoriented some parts of the quick settings. This used to be a horizontal line for the display brightness. Now it's vertical. Sometimes that actually got in my way because I'd be swiping down and trying to swipe and oops, I accidentally did that. And then I'd have to kind of trigger it back on. <laughs> that was really confusing the first couple of times I did that. And, you know, I also opted for a monochrome icon approach here. Looks nice, except my main complaint with doing something like this with your icons is that it rarely gets you 100% coverage. You can see my Authy icon is still bright red. Netflix surprisingly doesn't have an icon that was uh, themed in the same way. A few others that are still full color. And so it doesn't look entirely complete. You know, when you go into the app drawer, you really see it's really only halfway there, maybe even that, if not more color than monochrome. But anyways, you have the ability to do this uh, in Oxygen OS 14.0. Things are bouncy, things are bubbly. 
You could see all that uh, in navigating through the OS. Boing, boing. Yep. Um, you know, so it's got a little bit of that kind of colorful quality um, that gives it a little bit of life. Now, OnePlus has promised four years of OS updates, five years security, which is less than what we're seeing from Google and Samsung. The phone launched with little to no AI tendrils back when it first launched earlier this year. In April, OnePlus brought AI eraser to the device, supposedly, but even on my phone fully updated, I still don't have it. I looked all over. I looked in the Photos app. I looked in the camera app. My understanding is that it's actually in the OnePlus Photos app. And you go in here, you can edit a photo photo and find it as one of your edit capabilities down here. Uh, but I do not see it. There is no AI eraser in here and I have no idea why. So I couldn't actually play around with that. Needless to say, OnePlus is not, at least at this stage, all in on the AI race, but I guarantee you uh, it's coming. Depending on how you look at it, that's either a blessing or a curse. Overall, even though the OnePlus 12 is now around five months old, I still consider it a top tier smartphone that's worth considering. A big reason uh, for its success is that it offers so much for so little. $800 currently. That is not a whole lot for what you get on the OnePlus 12. So incredible specs, very competitive price. I'm happy that the OnePlus 12 was my companion in Italy and I'm sad to see our time come to an end, but we'll always have the memories and the photos. Leave a comment down below if you have a OnePlus 12. Let me know what you think of it at this point, especially after a few months of living with it. Are you happy with what it's delivering? And what is it missing? I wanna know, leave a comment. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.